Were you involved in a slip and fall accident and you want to know what to do? Well, check out this short video with the top 10 things to do after a slip and fall. Hey everybody, Barry here with The Lawful Channel. If you haven't already, would you subscribe to our channel? And if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments section below. If I can't help you, I'll try and find someone who can. Now let's jump into the video. Okay, the first thing that you wanna do after a slip and fall, call the store manager or store security immediately. It's essential that you get this on the record with the store right after it happened. That prevents them from later on saying or arguing that the injuries that you suffered occurred somewhere else, not at their location. I can't tell you how important it is to get a store to file a report after an incident. Number two, get a copy of that incident report right away and review it. I have seen many incident reports that were totally erroneous in terms of the facts of the accident. And then I've also had, on the other hand, an incident report that was so favorable that the case was over right away. So take a look at that incident report right after it happens to make sure it's accurate. Number three, file a report with the police department. Even if they don't come to the scene of the accident, you got the report on the 911 transcript and you can order that transcript later. This is essential because Currently, there are no neutral parties involved in this incident. There's you and there's the store. Getting it on record with a neutral party like the police department can only help you later on. Take photographs of the substance or object that you fell on. I have had so many people call me who were in slip and falls, but they don't know what they fell on. Well, that case is gonna be really hard to win. Number five, preserve the evidence of the accident. So for example, if you fell on a banana, make sure they put that banana in a plastic bag and they're keeping that as evidence, or you try to keep it as evidence. My guess is the store is gonna to wanna to keep it. Also, something you may not think about is keep those shoes. Don't get rid of those shoes that you were wearing at the type of the incident. I've had a case before where six or nine months later, the insurance defense uh, attorney wanted to see the shoes that were involved in the accident to measure the soles to see if they were slippery or not. So preserve all the evidence from the accident. Number six, make sure you obtain the names of everybody involved in the incident, especially any independent witnesses. There is nothing better you can do for your case than have a neutral, objective, third-party, independent witness that verifies what you went through. But also get the name and the contact information for the store manager, the security guard, whoever else was involved in the incident. Number seven, look around the area for cameras. Now, if this is a big box retailer like Walmart or Target, get calls all the time about people falling into Walmart, they're gonna have video cameras. And believe me, they're gonna look at that footage to see what happened. You wanna see that footage too, so ask them, can you see it? Now, chances are, they're not gonna let you. They're gonna tell you that uh, they won't show you the video footage absent a subpoena from a lawyer or from you if you file a lawsuit on your own but make sure you check out if there's video footage because that is essential in proving your case. And then when you get home, write a letter to the store, fax it to them, send it to them by email, whatever means they provided you to contact them and tell them to preserve all the evidence from the accident, including the videotape. Because if you don't do this, that video might be taped over in 24 or 48 hours. So it's really important to put them on notice that you want them to hold all the evidence from the slip and fall accident. Number eight, get medical attention immediately. Don't wait, don't go home and sit around for three or four days in pain and then decide to go to the doctor. They're gonna use that against you later to prove that your injuries may not have been caused by the slip and fall accident. In addition, when you go to your doctor, make sure you tell your doctor about the slip and fall. That's another way that we can independently and objectively document that the injuries that you suffered were as a result of a slip and fall accident at the location. So make sure you tell the doctor, yeah, two days ago I was at Walmart and I fell down and slipped and I hurt my back. Number nine, document everything. When you get home, write down the facts of exactly what happened in the accident, your path into the store, the way that you wound your way through the store until you got to the baby care aisle where there was a bottle of milk that was spilled by somebody and you slipped and fell. And then document what you're going through every day after the accident. 
your case is going to take six or nine or 12 months to resolve. Sometimes even longer than that. It could be 18 months or 24 months. You're not going to remember uh, 24 months later exactly what happened. So documenting things as you go can only help you later on. And number 10, contact a slip and fall attorney. I've, I know this is self-serving and I've talked about it many times on this channel, but your odds of recovering are vastly greater if you hire an attorney who knows what they're doing than if you try to take on Walmart on your own. Now it's time for your take on the law. Were you involved in a slip and fall accident at a Walmart or other retail establishment? Tell us about it in the comments section below. Hey, thanks for checking out this short video. If you have any questions or comments about a legal matter, please feel free to reach out to me. And if you haven't already, would you please subscribe to our channel? Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.